Hey everybody, Bo Bryant, restaurant consultant, author, and coach to coaches, back with another installation and today talking about more of the creative part of the business. Probably a bigger reason why a lot of us are here. So let's dive into it and talk about the awesome 6P of product. So like I said before, this is the reason why most people get in the game, right? We understand product. Maybe we understand business a little bit. Uh, we like people, but let's really separate ourselves from everybody else. Let's talk about what the best in the industry do relative to product today. And specifically on product, what I want to talk about is brand differentiation. What do the best in the business do when it comes to separating themselves? And I'll pose it to you this way. I'd like you to think about your favorite place to eat. Now, if you're in the business and you're buried and you haven't been out to eat in so long, you say you don't have a favorite place, uh, go back to your childhood, right? Or go to the place that you take your wife or your significant other. And what's the place that you always go to in a pinch and why? Now, I will tell you, there's a high likelihood that you fall into a category similar to everybody else. And that is a very niche specific, small menu type of concept that executes really, really well. So, if that's your scenario, if that's the case and you're like a lot of other people, then I ask you to consider comparing your concept to that concept. Tough one, huh? Are you like them? Are there people out there saying that your concept is their favorite concept? If so, maybe you've captured a formula for scalability. If not, then this video is certainly for you because I want to talk about how you go about orchestrating this. Starting with product and that point of differentiation, there's two real simple components when it comes to entering this landscape and garnering the attention of people. You can either be different or you can be better. Different, I'll get to in just a second actually, let's talk about better. So one of my favorite concepts in a group that I've worked with and somebody who just really, really impresses me day in and day out is the Hillstone Group. You'd know them better by some of their concepts like Gulfstream or Houston's. Now, these guys have a relatively small menu. Um, they're incredibly busy. No matter what location I go to, whether it's in Scottsdale or Denver or Los Angeles, they are busy as they can be. Not just Friday and Saturday. Lunch, dinner, weekdays, weekends. And I pose this theory to you as possibly why. I think it's because they have made it an art, a craft, of taking the things that are familiar and taking them to the entire next level as far as quality execution. Quite simply, they're just better, right? So, small menu, great niche, easy to explain who they are and what they are. They're a restaurant like a lot of other restaurants with a relatively small menu geared towards comfort food, a great bar scene, and they do it better than anybody else. Now that's a pretty sweeping statement. That's a pretty hard thing to do, but it's possible. That's just really, really polishing the craft. Now I could go on in naming other concepts like that, and there are some hybrid concepts, but let's talk about different. So I've got a client that I work with and a good buddy, Chris Bennett up in LA, and he owns a concept called Good Stuff. Now, great name. As we're working together, we're trying to figure out his unique selling proposition, and Chris and his wife, Carolyn, are really, really about people. They love people, they love their community, they're involved in philanthropy, and they really, really embrace the idea of good stuff. So we came up with a tagline for them, and that was, eat good, live good, do good. And under that umbrella kind of captures everything that they do. But when you look at their menu, and they are primarily a breakfast-based concept, but they're open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but around a really, really healthy, unique, and gourmet breakfast type of concept where their focus is mostly on health. Now, some of their uniqueness in their items, they don't pay lip service to the egg white like a lot of other concepts do, right? You script a really awesome menu and you have egg whites as an option. Well, these guys lead with egg whites and I know that might seem kind of silly or granular, but the reality is uh, Chris's uh, breakfast salad very, very unique item to the landscape. Never seen anything like it, topped with egg whites. It's amazing. I was very, very put off the first time I thought about ordering it. But I digress to Chris every time I go and he tells me what to order. We order and eat it together, and, you know, our own plate. 
and I'm blown away every time. Same with his breakfast tacos, same with his vegetable breakfast omelet uh, made with egg whites. Just everything they do is unique. It's in a landscape that I understand, breakfast, but it's done with such an elegant twist and such a unique and different proposition. I'll take that a step further. There's a client that I work with right now in San Diego, and it's a new startup, and trying to capture their essence, the one thing that we know is that in a sea of all of these businesses in downtown San Diego, the way to capture somebody's attention is to be different. If you're going to be the lip service concept, you're going to get, again, we've talked about this, you're going to get relegated and boiled down to just another restaurant. And what makes that restaurant appealing? So with the Grand Artique and the Gypsy Bar, we created a gypsy menu with a lot of really unique food that captures people's attention. Starting with our appetizers, uh, in the menu that I wrote for them, we have a chorizo stuffed date wrapped in bacon. Unbelievable combination of salty, sweet, chewy, crunchy, fun, fun item. We also have curry fried crunchy chickpeas as a little appetizer share bowl and really, really fun, really unique. Next, uh, in their sandwich category, we have a chicken and waffle panini. Now, chicken and waffles have obviously garnered quite a bit of esteem, but who's taken and made a bread out of waffle and crushed it in a panini with this amazing uh, syrup or gravy as what goes in between the bread? And then we also took a uh, kind of a unique twist on an old item with the Monte Cristo, and we took a jelly-filled donut. Monte Cristo. It's really just a glazed donut with a spicy uh, kind of adobo jelly and your traditional Monte Cristo layers. And of course, it's not fried. The donut was already fried, but it just comes out with a really unique aesthetic, really cool position. A um, couple of items that we did relative to the burgers, which I think kind of presented a different way too. We did a fried pickle pastrami burger with a Dijon pesto mayo and really really cool you've got your burger you've got your layers of caramelized pastrami and then these crunchy fried pickles just a really fun way to approach the landscape in a different way and last we did the french toast grilled cheeseburger so french toast thick texas french toast with two different types of cheese on the burger it's just absolutely heaven and a really unique thing. So all of these items are familiar. Uh, when I explain them to you, you can understand what they are, but you've never seen them anywhere before. So this leads to the concept of fair market value. When you enter a landscape with a uniqueness or a point of differentiation, and it's not something I can compare to anybody else, how much do you charge for it? Well, you have a lot more, you have, you have a much larger and more liberal platform to be more unique with your pricing to maybe get more and capture more gross profit. If you're just doing burgers and wings and sandwiches in a very traditional way, again, people are gonna know what the value of that is and you're gonna be held to it. So those are some things I want you to consider as far as product. Now, I would say the last client that I'm gonna reference that really, to me, takes the best of both worlds. They do it better and they do it different. The owner of the concept, Mario Del Perro, had a phenomenal idea years ago with his concept Mendocino Farms up in LA, a multi-unit sandwich shop. But his essence in identifying his brand was we are a sandwich shop that takes gourmet food, white tablecloth, fine dining food, and we shove it into bread. Now I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially how they explain it. So you're gonna have a sandwich unlike any other sandwich you've ever had with so much thought put into the flavor, the detail, the concept of food that gets shoved in between bread, and then the quality, the execution, unreal. So I'd like you to consider one of those platforms or possibly even going that hybrid and watch the impact that it's gonna make. Now, in the next section, what we're gonna dive into is more of the pricing. Now, you got fair market value, you can compare what will the market bear to how you can charge for your product, but we're gonna take it a step further and kind of get into the ugly part that nobody likes to talk about, and that's the analytics. And we're gonna look at how to cost the item, how to capture it and measure it, uh, how to select a food costing program or a way to always go back and know what your current food cost is. This is an absolute foundation principle that the best in the business use. After that, we're gonna find 
once we capture that cost of the item and we know what the theoretical cost should be when we execute it perfectly, and then when we run our numbers at the end of the month and we see what our true cost was, now we can identify a gap and we can figure out how to close the gap. So that's what we're going to be talking about next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little motivation, inspiration, uh, or otherwise just kind of got the juices flowing. Product is fun, but it needs to fit your brand and figure out a way to break those shackles of fair market value, enter your landscape in a unique way, and make people crave what you have. Anyway, Bo Bryant reminding you we all get better when we all get better together. That's my purpose for being here. I hope you enjoy the free content. Check out more information at BoBryant.com. And until next time, my friends, take good care and be better. See ya.